Our message will be a two-part message. I will deliver the message to the country and my brother will come on up and deliver the message for the people of Siaya County and its borders. Ladies and gentlemen, it is such a privilege to stand before you today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, God is good. God is good all the time and his plans for us are always good. His plans are especially good for those that love him. And my father loved him and my mother loved him and I loved him. So even though I cannot make sense of the events that happened this week, I give God praise and his praise will not leave my lips because he is good. He has seen beyond today. He has seen beyond the next hundred years and he saw that this was good. So I give thanks. So let us not entirely lose ourselves in the morning. Let us celebrate a life well lived together. Bless the Lord with me. I want to talk about one thing um, and one thing only. I had many, but I'll focus on one thing, his pursuit of excellence. I posted about my father for the first time ever. Immediately, Joel confirmed that he was actually dead. He did not like social media. He did not like being in the limelight. He appreciated just doing his work in the silence, not having people talk about it. So not many people knew he was my father and not many people knew we were related. But I was deeply, deeply, deeply inspired by his work. I'll pause for a second as our brothers take their respects. Thank you, friends. God bless you. So I'll talk about his pursuit of excellence. In the aftermath of my post, I, was, I thought I was only posting it to my global team so that people know where I am and why I'm missing for a month or more. And it blew up and I didn't expect that. But I promised I'd tell stories of his pursuit of excellence and I'll tell two memorables what, right, right here, right now. A couple of people were digging around and asking, how is it that his daughter did all these things? She got her engineering degree from MIT and from Stanford and a business degree from Cambridge. Like what kind of parent creates and upbrings children like this? And I'm here to share with you the kind of man that raises children like me. And I wish I could talk about Joy, but he likes his privacy even more. He's amazing and smart as well. Now, parents, if you're wondering, how do I get my child to change not just Kenya, but the world? Live it. Our children learn by how we show up in this world. And people here have stolen my speech because I was going to talk about how he gave 110% to everything. He never needed to tell Joey or I, work hard, read hard, because we saw him. We saw him do it. Even before I was born, he was reading the Bible cover to cover every year. And on hard years, like 2022, 2022 was a hard year in our family, he read the Bible cover to cover twice. And there's a competition and I'm the slowpoke on my family, but because we saw him live it, we were inspired to be it. That's the easiest way to teach your children to change the world. It's not telling them, it is doing. And because he never used to talk about his reading of the Bible, he actually just used to show it. Now, when we talk about his work and his pursuit of excellence, he worked as if he was working for God. He had an audience of one. Anything he was doing, he was working for God and God alone. And we saw it. Let me tell you, this man, when I was in, already in college and Joey was about to go into college, he went back to university in Nairobi with my peers. I'm not sure about you, but I wouldn't be that humble. I'm not sure I could make it with Gen Z in class. And he was in class with my classmates. Now let me set the stage for you. He's in the parallel program. He's based in Lake Kipia Air Base. He's commuting between Nanyuki and Nairobi for classes, for exams. And those of you who've been to University of Nairobi know it's not an easy path. And Operation Linda Inchi was fully in session and he had a lot of responsibilities in Laikipia Air Base across the borders and this man excelled. He got a first class honors with my generation. He was in class with my peers. How could I not but be this? 
I'll tell you another short story. In 2005, he was posted to France. My father does not speak French, or he did not at that point. He had six months to learn a new language from scratch because failure was never an option in his mind. Do you know the man learned French? And he had to pass to a certain level for them to, be, uh, to accept him. It was Napoleon Bonaparte School, the best military school in France. The man did not know French, but he didn't tell his bosses, I can't do it. He jumped right into it, full energy, and he learned French. Now, let me give you a complication. During this period, he swallowed a fishbone. It got lodged in his intestines, and he was hospitalized for close to two months. He was my size. When I got out of third form and I went to see him in Armed Forces Memorial, he was my size, and I was broken. And here he was, sneaking out of Forces Memorial with my mom to go to Allianz Francaise to take his French exams so that he doesn't disappoint the government of Kenya, even as a junior officer. <laughs> he made it. He passed that level that was needed. He did his postgraduate diploma, and he made excellent leaders and friends from around the world, which is why he's getting so many messages. He met a lot of them in that school, and they were reaching out to us, and they've been so supportive. Actually, before I forget, Kenya Defense Forces, you all have been my family since my birth, and I'm so grateful for the love, support, care you've shown for me, Joey, Mom, and the rest of the family in this period. I'm so grateful. My heart is filled with so much thanks for you. Public servants, distinguished guests, you all have been so caring. We so appreciate you. So, if you leave with only one thing from what I have said today, please pursue excellence. Pursue excellence and work as if no one else is watching you but God, because then your reward is in heaven. He didn't need the title to lead. That's why he rejuvenated military Christian fellowship with Muhashimi Wajraf Kingani over there. That's why he found himself leading Habitat for Humanity Kenya, even when there's not. He was always giving his good ideas. He had so many ideas for the country. That's why he was busy planting millions of trees with the forces under his fierce influence. He's planted so many trees for Kenyans. He had such a big heart for this nation. In closing, I'll tell you of his love for Kenya and his loves that you haven't heard of before. He had a big love for his family. He took me to school. Every day he was in the country for all of my elementary school. He loved his family. Fathers, show up for your family because your presence makes a difference. Even now at my big age, he would still show up for me at the airport. He would show up and take me shopping. He would show up and go bowling with my, my son and my brother. He would show up and just be very present and loving. He would tell mom, his wife of 40 years, I love you and I'm so grateful that I get to come home to you after this hard day, you make it bearable. He loved us so dearly, so please love your families and give your all. If all of us can just take a bit of this and give our all to the country, our country will be fast walled in no time. And I look forward to carrying on that legacy with my brother, who will give his love letter to the people of Siaya, Alego, Kisumu, and the people of this land. Joey, please come up. Thank you all. Excellency President, Excellency First Lady, Excellency Deputy President.